Well, everything in life is symbolism, right? So like I'm looking at your walls and I'm looking at things that you were connected to and they tell a story, right? Right. So when you look at something, it tells a story. Right. So what's the difference between a car telling a story or a poster telling a story? Hi, it's 11 o'clock. You know what that means. It's Monday at 11 o'clock. Welcome to the Chaz Palmentary Show. Uh, before I bring out my guest, I want to remind you all, if you want to see the one-man show starting in September, touring all over the country, you go to chazpalmentary.net. A show before the movie, before the musical, was voted best show of the year in Las Vegas. Also, was a it turned into a musical, and when I did it as a one-man show on Broadway, it was a tremendous critically acclaimed show. So, uh, my guest today, I can't even talk about my merchandise or everything else because I want to bring him out right now. I've been watching, I saw him 25 years ago and I was fascinated. And people all over the world are fascinated by this guy. He is a psychic medium. And I didn't know that, that you have to be uh, a psychic to be a medium. Uh, is that right? That is true. Right, that's correct. He is a man, you've seen him on so many shows He's actually in this field. Uh, you don't get any higher than this. John Edwards, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. It is such an honor to meet you in person. Oh, formally. Um, we, we, I, I told you right before I yeah. met you, uh, we were both doing a TV show at the same time. And I was like starstruck. And I, I, didn't, I didn't say anything to you. But I called oh. my wife after. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Come on. Well, that's the way I feel right now. And I mean that. Uh, um, because I, I read about you. Many years ago, and I said, wow, because, and I'm not a psychic medium at all, please, but I always like work on it as a psychic. Okay. Uh, I just try to work on it because I felt it was something that interests me. And I was with a girl, and, and I was with a, a woman once who I remember she was uh, many, many years ago, and she looked at this in a bank, and the woman had a, she had a, a musical note on her brooch, and she said to the woman, she goes, excuse me, do you play piano? And I was just standing next to her, and the woman said, yes. And she said, did your grandmother teach you how to play the piano uh, and you used to sit next to her? And the woman just looked at her and said, please stop talking. <laughs> yes. And I was like, and then we walked away, and I said, what the hell was that? And she told me. And it was an ambush reading. She ambushed her. That was an ambush reading? <laughs> that was an ambush reading. Well, it's I, like a drive-by. I was just a <laughs> drive-by reading. I love that. And I was just like, what is that? And then she said that she's psychic, and I... And I said, "Gee, I used to get feelings, but but I but I started reading. And that that was the incident that got me on it. But you have to tell me when did you know? And I'm sure you're asked this a lot. You're growing up. Right. Where, you grew up in uh, Long Island. In Long Island. Long Island. Yeah, right. Glen Cove, Long Island. Glen Cove, Long Island. Like you're a young boy growing up, and how did this all of a sudden go? Hey, man, what, what's going on here? So half of my family is Italian." So my Italian side of the family would have psychics come to the house all the time, all the time. Back then? All the time. Card readers, psychics, wow. seances. It was like, it was a paranormal hub of activity. My other side of the family is Irish. That was the, we don't talk about that stuff. Right. This is not real. Um, I don't want my son around that. And for most of my life, my mom kept me away from all of that until they divorced and I moved into my grandmother's house. So now I was living in the paranormal hub of activity. But I had adopted my dad's New York City police officer, career military guy attitude, like, it's a ladies thing, it's not real, you know. And I would poke holes at all of the people going for readings when they would come out of the room. Right. You know, one of my favorites was like, I remember this guy, I was doing, was reading cards and everybody would come out and I'd be like, wait, let me guess. He tells you you're going to Florida. And they were like, yes. And I'm like, of course you're going to Florida. You live in New York. Everybody goes to Florida. You know, like I had that kind of mentality. Right, right. And then I went for a reading with one of the women that came. Her name is Lydia Clar. And she changed my life. Like the information that she gave me. And how old are you? I was 15. 15. I was 15. My, my mom told me I was allowed to go if I treated her with respect. I said, I'll treat her with respect, but I'm not helping her. And she said, just go in with an open mind. I go, I'll go in with an open mind, but I'm not helping her. Because I truly believe that everybody that had gone before was somehow like, you know, 
opening up to her and right. she was extrapolating information. Right. And I'm like, she's not doing that to me. And she took my high school ring. She held on to my high school ring. Wow. And she did what's called psychometry. And psychometry is where you, there's two types of psychometry. There's objective psychometry and then there's subjective psychometry. Objective psychometry is where somebody can like touch an object and give you the history of like the table. Subjective psychometry is where you could read a person from holding a ring or a yeah, watch. That's what I what I have to yeah. what I try to do. Yes. And that's what she did. She she did she did psychometry and she took my ring and she kind of like put it up to her forehead and she looked down and never looked at me again and just started like rattling off information. And the bottom line is the information that she came out with was so specifically accurate and then happened shortly thereafter. Like there was a certain part of me that was like, whoa, this woman like read my mind in some way. That's kind of like weird, cool and uncomfortable. Then the stuff that she told me was gonna happen happened within a very short period of time. And then I, I used the word violated. I didn't like the feeling. So I didn't like the fact that she was able to kind of like not know anything about me, then know all this stuff about me. And then she knew what was gonna happen as a result. That made me uncomfortable. I mean, it did make me feel good. Yeah. It made me feel like somebody like opted me in a weird yes, way. Yeah. So I didn't go to develop my abilities for, you know, she told me in this reading that I, I could do this and I would be doing this. That part I didn't really care about. The part that I cared about was, wait, if she could do this, does that mean like these other people can actually, I don't want anybody to be able to do this again. So for anybody that's been robbed, they put in a security system. So I was looking for, is there like an energetic security system? So that sent me to the public library. And as I learned more about the subject matter, I realized my entire life I had had this ability, but I just didn't know what it was. I just thought it was common sense. I mean, you say things like that. And again, I'm a, I don't know. I, I think you're Catholic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so am I. Recovering, but Recovering, still. Recovering, yeah, so, so am I, so am I. And I believe God. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a God. Absolutely. No question. Um, and I believe there's a devil, too. I believe there's a negative force. I believe in positive and negative energy as well. I believe when I say devil, on both I, sides, I don't mean a guy with horns and yeah, red. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean positive Ill and negative energy yep. in the world. Yep. I totally believe in that. I actually read books, John, about people who are atheists. I want to know. I said, okay, you you're saying this, and I said I'm going to read. Oh, the book was called God is Not Great, if I remember, because I want to read that. I want yep. to say, all right. You're saying this, you know, show me your wares. Why is that? So I would read about, and I said, okay, but all right, you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't sell it to me, all right, because I can only go how I feel. Right. I said, maybe you haven't been touched. You know, maybe whatever reason, the good spirits don't touch you. And they say, well, he's gone, so... So I, I, I grew up with a very, very Catholic grandmother who took me to Mass every single yeah, day. Yeah, me too, I used to go to Mass. Every day until I was in first grade. Every day. Right. And so I got, and she spread it around three different parishes. So we had like St. Rocco's, we had St. Patrick's. Right. And we had St. Hyacinth's. So we right. had like three different churches that we can go to. Um, I got a really good indoctrination into the Catholic church. Yeah. She had a better altar in her bedroom than like some wow. of the churches, right? Prayed twice a day. So I really grew up with a faith-based informed place. And I, I think that my mind just my mind in general is a critical thinking mind. I always had questions. So I was also thrown out of religious instruction three times right. for asking questions that were deemed- Asking bad. questions, yes. Inappropriate, like you're not allowed to question. And I just remember thinking, but I have questions. Like I had a very hard time believing that there were two of every animal on a boat. Like that was something yes. that I had a hard time with. I had a hard time with the Garden of Eden story that you know we all came from Adam and Eve and they only had two kids. So what got me thrown out, thrown out, was when I asked them before my confirmation, does that mean that Eve had sex with her sons? Right, Like, yes. out. They had to write a letter to the diocese to get me <laughs> to get me back in so I could make my confirmation well, so my grandmother would be It's a legitimate happy. question. Right. So I think I've always been a questioner, but I've applied that same questioning to my own field, my own work. And I love having conversations with atheists because they're they're very peaceful in their- in They their, are. They're so peaceful. And it, and it, it annoys me. <laughs> it really annoys me because obviously I got the Catholic guilt. Right, right. You know, we have the guilt when we do something like, oh God, they don't care about nothing. But I think, and I had this conversation with my uh, 
a psychiatrist who I've been seeing, and he's he's one of the most brilliant psychiatrists in the world, and he's he's pretty famous. Uh, actually, he doesn't see him. nobody could see him. I only see him because I've been going with him thirty two years. Uh, uh, Doctor Phil Stutz, and I asked him that question once, and he's a believer in the spiritual good forces, negative right. forces, and he said it's just it. They basically he goes they're just people who. They want an excuse to live the life they want to live, and they don't want no apologies from anybody. I, I look at belief and philosophy right. like, like seasoning, <clears throat> right? Like it's a strange way of looking at it, but like we're, we're both raised Italian. You know that there's the conversation always like who's got the best red stuff on, on Sundays. Which exactly, grandmother, yes. right? My grandmother, <clears throat> your grandmother, I right. make mine, you make yours. Right. Who calls it sauce? Who calls it gravy, right? All of that conversation comes in. But when you boil it down, we're talking about tomatoes and how they're seasoned. Right. Yes. So we're talking about a life and how is it seasoned, and we season our lives in a certain way, and there's a right. similarity in the seasoning. And um, I think one of the coolest moments I had doing this work, I was on the road, and you being on the road forever as well, you know that like your life on the road is hotel after hotel, yes. rental car after rental car, right. plane after plane, <clears throat> and I I was driving from one city in Texas to Houston, and it was like nine o'clock at night. And the sun was just about setting and I had just done an event. So I was still somewhat open. And all of a sudden I just got this like download, this thought that science is the true religion of God. And I just was like, whoa, and what the hell am I supposed to do with that? You know? And I thought about it and I thought, if you look at the complexities in the universe, science really does explain some of the greatest complexities that we can't look at in, in any other way, other way. But belief and faith and science are not mutually exclusive. And I think that there's so many things that people believed in that they didn't have proof of yet. And then science backed it up. So I truly believe that there's a, um, you know, it's just we're calling the seasoning different, you know, and, and looking at things philosophically different, but that there is a higher divine matrix no question there is but but being devil's advocate here or whatever did adam and eve happen did the two of everything happen did all of that happen or is this just the prophet or the disciples doing a metaphor of like a metaphor for something else i i want to know did it happen did this really happen or, or how are we here or then there's times i go it doesn't matter right it just doesn't matter so do you remember the, remember the miniseries Jesus of Nazareth? Yes. Okay, so that was like a big tentpole miniseries. Yes, yes. Okay, so I don't know, I was probably nine or 10 at the time when it was on, and I remember it was a big family viewing, and we watched it on my grandmother's 19-inch RCA piece of furniture that right. was stuck in the corner. And I was on the floor in the dining room like this, watching right. my grandmother, my aunt, my mom, and everybody was like, I, I had question on top of question, and right. I was like, how do they know, and why is he speaking English, and how come he's not darker if he came from that side of the world? Right, exactly. I was like 10, you know? So finally, my mom said, can you wait to the commercial? And I was like, sure. So the commercial happened, I popped up, asked my questions again, and she said, are you okay believing that there was a man that existed named Jesus? And I went, yes. She goes, are you okay that there was a group of people that wrote down some of his messages? Mm. I went, yes. She goes, are you okay with some of those people wrote down those messages years after he was gone? Because maybe then they had the strength and courage to tell the story. And I went, yes, because they wouldn't get in trouble. Yes. And she goes, and are you okay with maybe some of those stories being like a game of telephone? Some people embellish some, some True. people this. But when you, when you look at the truth of it, there's like a message there. And I went, yes. She goes, look at this miniseries as being just that, somebody's depiction of what those stories might be. Like you did a book report, they're doing a TV report. I was like, okay. And then my aunt was like, now shut the F up before we stone you. Well, I mean, that's a pretty good answer. I mean. But that was just it, she gave me one. She gave you an answer. She Th gave that's me an what answer. I want, I want an answer. Because I, believe, look, again, what you just said to me. Because I, I, I try to read, I'm, I'm an avid reader. And I go, okay. There was a man named Jesus. I right. get that. There was, was he God? Okay, there's, there's, that's debatable. Some people have that debate. Was there a man named Jesus who was a prophet? And then I go, okay, here's this guy, never traveled more than 30 miles from his, where he was born, never uh, had the same 12 friends. Gotta be Italian. Had the same, <laughs> that's an old joke. 
That's a joke by a, a, a comedian I know. I got to give him credit, Goomba Johnny. He's a very funny comic. But he says things like that. Jesus was Italian, hung around with the same 12 friends. They didn't have a job. They wore sandals. And the mother thought he was God. I, you know, it was a, <laughs> And I give that to uh, Goomba Johnny. But that was very funny. And so, okay, maybe th you're right. Maybe they just embellished this. So I said, but the, how could he be the, this person could be the centipede of all Christianity, of all religion. All these years later, there was no internet. Right, he had a good publicist. Uh, I, this guy had a great publicist. <laughs> and I asked, I had a conversation once with Bill Riley, who, who was a devout Catholic. Who, who, I mean, he was very much uh, Irish, really. And I talked to him about it, because I, I, I always ask these questions. I said, well, how do, what is your proof? And he said, well, think about it. He said, he said to me, Chaz, he goes, God spoke to thousands of people. How did they hear him? There was no megaphone. There's no microphones. How did that happen? And I'm like, yeah, how did that happen? It's God. It's Jesus. And I just kept reading and knowing more and more about that. And do you feel... Sometimes I feel like I'm connected to God as you're walking around. Do you feel that? Every day. Every day. So do I. Every day. I but I don't feel like I have to be in a church for it. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I have, um, and I'm just going, man. I'm, I want to just go with you and just talk. I, I have a friend who's I, actually, that's the guy right there, Phil Folia. And um, he's my best friend. Like brothers, like together, spoke each other 100, 20 times a day for, for like all our lives. And then he died from COVID. Mm, I'm very sorry. First said, thank you. And didn't have to. But anyway, that's another story. But I feel like he's with me all the day. He passed, but I feel like he didn't pass. Right. Is that weird? No, it's because you're open to energy. So you're recognizing that we're more than just this. We're more than the shirt, right? We're more than the physical flesh. We're a consciousness. We're an energy. And where there's connection and love, that can't be shuttered. So if your wife is in a different room, that doesn't mean that you can't connect with her. doesn't mean you can't talk to her. It doesn't mean you can't reach out to her. Right. You're just not in the same physical space. So right now, when someone we love leaves the physical world, they basically are still, there's a survival of consciousness. And that survival of consciousness is energy. And that energy is something that we can connect with. And where there's love, there is connection. And one of the things, one of the things, Chaz, that I've, I've done my entire life is every person that I love that I miss I do what you just did. I love the fact that you're filming this and he's right here. I think yeah. that honor is so awesome. Yeah. And I remember I was doing an event at Anton's of Hicksville. Um, and it's a place on Old Country Road in Long Island. And some guy came up to me after and he said to me, I just want to let you know, I think you're really funny. And I was like, oh, I don't mean to be funny. He goes, no. He goes, but you're, 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 you're really funny when you're telling your stories. He goes, and I love the accuracy. He goes, can I, but can I just say something? And I was like, you can say whatever you like. Right. He goes, the stories about your family, like nobody cares. He goes, you should probably take that out. And I like looked at him and I said, oh, you should probably never come see me again. And he goes, what? I go, you should probably never come see me again. I go, because not only am I honoring my family and keeping them alive and keeping them present, I go, I'm sharing them with you. I go, so if you want me to share my family, I go, then you shouldn't come back and see me. Absolutely. So I feel like it's really important for us to honor those that came before us because yes. it's what made us who we are. Wow, that's beautiful, John. But like my mom, my mom was 97. My father was 90 when he passed. I was, and and sometimes I feel connected to them. I do. Not all the time. I have to like go for it. Like, you know, in other words, pray and stuff. Or allow it. Or allow it. Right. But why is it that my friend, my, I took my friend's death harder than I did my parents. So the relationship dynamic is something to consider when we're talking about loss. When we have a good relationship with someone, we love and we miss them. But there's not other ex extraneous things that might be tethered to it. Like you already said, like it said, it didn't have to happen. Right. So you have a remorse for him about circumstances, right? And I think that we'll look at that in any type of global event, right? If you right. see that there's a natural disaster that happens someplace, right. and you're like, oh my God, that's so sad that that happened to them, it could be very impactful. Right. Some people can go through the loss of family members and they'll navigate it, but then their dog dies. And when the dog dies, 
they like fall apart. And they're like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Like I lost my parents. Right. I lost my aunts and uncles. I lost my sibling. And then the poodle passes and they literally lost it because it was the it was the the breaking point. So we sometimes can go through different types of losses in different ways. Right. We're gonna react differently because of circumstances. Right. And no two relationships are ever gonna be the same on how we grieve. Now, when you talk to people and you and you do a, I don't know, when you, like your shows event, I heard yeah. are pretty amazing. Oh, thank you. No, really, I, I, I really, I've, I've never saw one, but I hear and read about it. I said, I have to come to one of your shows. I, I mean, would love that. No, no, I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. I'm going to get a date where I'm coming. You just pick people out. Is that how it is? And you do? No, they pick people out. I just kind of show up, right? You, you just show up. Yep, I just now, show up. D- does it ever happen when you just get nothing and you go, I'm sorry? No, it, happened, it happens with one-on-one people. Like I've had it happen with private readings. Right. I had it happen once on Larry King Live, which was really not fun. Right. Um, which was, it turned out to be a funny moment because somebody called up and they were like, hi, I'm Mary. I want to connect with my dad. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't have whatever it is that you're asking me for. And then we went to commercial and Larry just looked at me and he went, you, I might believe. And I was like, because I didn't read for the person. And he goes, well, you could have said anything. I go, no, I couldn't have said anything. I said, I didn't get anything to say. Wow. You know, again, I, I am not in your in your caliber what you do, but a, as a, a guy who just works on it, I was on a movie set. I have to tell you this, and I'm doing some readings with, with some of my friends. You know, kidding around, we're all laughing. When you say readings, you mean like reading. my readings or like like no, script, not like, like no, script readings? No, like if somebody give me a piece of jewelry. So like my readings, like like Is psychic that, readings, like intuitively. I guess so, yeah. Okay. And. There was a grip there, and he said, I don't believe in any of this bullshit. So I said, I, I said, that's okay. And he was really adamant about it, and he said, I'll tell you what. See this wedding ring? I've been wearing it for 30 years. He goes, I don't think I've ever taken it off. He goes, I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to put it in your hand. This is in front of the whole The cast was there. Okay. He goes, go ahead. Go ahead, Chaz. Read. Do me. Just like that. So I get the, I get the ring. You're a better man than me. No, I said, give me the ring. I said, I don't care. I said, I, I said, look, sometimes nothing happens. He gives me the ring, and everybody's standing and they're looking at me. John, I am not exaggerating one bit. And you I nailed s- him. You nailed him. What? You nailed him. Yeah. And I, and I said, <laughs> you were born on a farm. And he went, good guess. And I said, okay. I said, it was a... But now it's like, you ever see you get a piece of paper and you just go... Yeah. It's like I see the pictures. Yep. It was like, what? So that's called clairvoyance. When you're seeing those images, that's a clairvoyant image. You're clearly seeing something. That's what it translates to. That's what that is, clairvoyant. Mm-hmm. So I'm going, you were born on a farm. It was a big farm. He goes, yeah. I go, there was a, oh, there was a dirt road behind you, white gravel. Now I got his attention. He goes, Yeah. And I could see everybody like tense. I said, there was a big dirt road behind the farm. You got hurt on that dirt road when you were a little boy, maybe 10, 11 years old. He goes, yeah. I went, a white car? A white car picked you up? He went, yes. And I went, Jay, I'm getting the letter J. He went, my Uncle Jim, give me my ring back. He got nervous and he took his ring back. And I was like, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be taking Chaz on the road with me. (laughs) No, but it's never happened like that before. I wish I could say that happens a lot. Yeah, but if it happens once, that means it can happen again. Yeah, but that was just like, the only other time something like that happened was with Michael Lerner, the actor, who said, yeah, do me. We were doing a movie together and he gave me his thing and I went, oof. I said, your father had a, a station wagon with the wood on the side? He went, yeah. And I said, you and your brother used to sit in the back, facing backwards, and would whistle. And he just looked at me, stunned. He went, yes. He went, holy shit. And I stopped. I don't know what happened. We just stopped. I'm asking you because you're so advanced and you do this. And I'm such, like, I'm, just, I'm, a, I'm a baby compared to you. And I go... Let's, let's think about it like fitness, right? Yeah. So let's say you had somebody come in and... You have 50 people that are in your audience and 50 people have the same fitness person comes in. They get the same training, the same diet, the same advice, right? right. They do exactly the same thing every single day. Certain people are going to get in kick-ass shape and certain people are going to be like, 
what the hell? Like, how come they got abs and right. I don't have abs, right? right? So meanwhile, you're going to see that there's a genetic predisposition. You may have a genetic predisposition where you're allowing yourself to be open to this, which means you probably have also had a lot of energetic drains around people. Like you probably have been exhausted by some of the people you've been with yeah. or been around or gotten headaches or, you know, energy can sometimes affect you in that capacity. When you get near a person, John, and there's something, do you ever get like, woof, I don't... Yeah, I mean, I'll sense, I'll sense something about a person, but when I'm not doing this work, I am like a vault. I'm literally like the Fort Knox of energy because I don't want to pick up on people. And I tell people all the time that it's never appropriate to enter someone's vibration without their consent. So for example, like the bank reading, like that's not okay because that woman was working. She's at a bank. She wasn't looking so for a reading. So you shouldn't do that. You should never do that, right? Because you don't know where somebody is on their journey of grief. So I find that level of approach a little bit egotistical when people do that because wow. you don't know how it can affect them. And it could actually affect them in a really, really negative way. Whenever I do it, it's always, I talk with, about- With the, permission. With yeah, permission. Yeah. But I never talk about their future. I always talk about the p past for some reason. Because you can validate that. You can validate. Now, if you decided to look towards their future, you'd be able to see what's coming up for them yeah, as well. Yeah, I, I, I avoid that. Right. I just don't think it's- I don't know. I don't like the word predict. I like the word project. So if I'm working with a client, I'll talk about, here's where we are. Here's what's happened. Here's what I'm seeing. And the reason why I'm, I say, here's what I'm seeing, this is a projection of today. What if there's something that's negative that they can alter? Then they, you're giving them an opportunity to, to kind of to shift, to shift something. That. Yep. Did, did, are you ever wrong? Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I'm just curious. Yeah, usually it's the in, the interpretation that's wrong and leads to like funny moments, right? You know, where I will think it's one thing and then it turns out to be something completely different. I remember one time on Crossing Over, the TV show that I hosted, I was reading for. There were three women in the studio, and the energy about them—they had both. All three of them had lost their husbands, and I got all this information about how it was a tragedy, and I got details about it, but I had no idea how their husbands actually passed. Pass. So I said to them at the end, I go, can I just ask you guys, how, how did they pass? And the audience all together went 9-11. And I remember like turning around, like looking at the audience going, like, are these women famous? Like, like why, how do they all know? And I said, how do you guys know that their husbands passed on 9-11? And one lady was like, because we're paying attention to what you're saying. I wasn't paying attention to what I was saying. If I had listened to what came through, it was kind of obvious for everybody else, but it wasn't obvious for me. Oh man! Yeah. So sometimes I'll miss I'll miss the obvious. Um, but like, what what I find interesting is like a lot of people will attack the subject matter and they'll say, "Why does it got to be initials? Why can't it just be names?" And a lot of times it is just names. But here you actually got the guy's initial, right? And I got the initial. I didn't get the name, but I saw it. You know, J. yeah, you saw it. That was my question. How did you How did you get it? Did you hear it? I can now say that I will feel it in my mouth. Yeah. I, I, there was a, a psychic I knew. I don't know if you knew him. His name was Ron Bard. He was a psychic. He, you know, it, it, not as well known as you. But he said to me, and he said, oh, you know, you, you have that thing. You should keep working on it, you know. And I said, well, he goes, if you think of something, just no matter how crazy it is, just spit it out. Yeah. And once, once I do that, I, I, that's what it was. I went, J, J, J. And I said, J. So I just spit it out. So sometimes when I was first starting and I would be, you know, doing a reading for somebody, I would say to them, um, I'm going to just be counting to myself. I just need to, I needed to talk. I needed to be like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then all of a sudden it was like, I had to like get the momentum of my energy going. Wow. And then it's like a story. Sometimes I would work, I loved working with cards, like any type of cards, like Spanish cards or Italian cards. or Cards? Yeah, like tarot cards, like, because they tell a story. Like, if I put a deck of cards in your hand, you'd be like, well, if you could do it the way you're doing it, a deck of cards, you would be like off the hook. Because they, they tell you, they actually tell you a story. And then all of a sudden it becomes, you become like, oh, this is like a three-dimensional story that you're talking about. I mean, you, the per I, I've never done that before, but when a person, do you do the tarot cards at your... Uh events no i don't i just don't. i keep them i i just have them if i do like like tonight i have private clients right. i will have them in front of me so no but but they're your cards they're my cards and you go like and then they move them around or shuffle if them? i was in front of them i would have them shuffle them but i'll i'll do it for them and then you just put the card down yep there's and, a specific layout that you can use and then sometimes i don't even i don't even like look look at the 
look at them, um, but they just tell a story. I'm just like freaking out here. <laughs> wow. Well, everything in life is symbolism, right? So like I'm looking at your walls and I'm looking at things that you were connected to and they tell a story, right? Right. So when you look at something, it tells a story. Right. So what's the difference between a card telling a story or a poster telling a story? Well, because the poster is mine. The card is just yours. Right. But it's no different. It's, it's when I tell you no different, it would be as if I handed you a photo of my family and you read, you looked at the energy of the photo. It'd be no different than you looking at the energy of a ring. Wait a minute. Is, uh... And I'm, I'm sorry. So is it a standard set of cards that everybody gets? Same set of cards everybody Same has? Same set. So your playing deck of cards is a de derived aspect of the tarot. You can see a correlation. So the tarot is made up of four different suits, and that's called the minor arcana. And then it's got something called the major arcana. The major arcana are 22 additional cards that go on top of the regular playing deck that we have. So we're not talking about like a regular poker cards we're talking you, you could like you could legitimately people could read with regular playing cards they could use a regular playing deck um i i have a deck of spanish playing cards that i like to read with a regular deck of cards regular deck of cards i could put it in front of me right now mm -hmm. and go uh this is two of spades well and i could start talking about it right but how does that so in my mind, I'd have to do a quick translation because I would go the two of spades is really the two of swords and the two of swords is a message of communication. So I know what the cards mean. So it's like they have an assigned value. So it's, think about an alphabet. You have 26 letters in the alphabet. Right. You put those letters together, they form different words. You put the cards together, they form different stories. When you do your act, your show, how long is it usually? Well, it depends upon where we're talking. So if I'm doing an event, it's... It's normally two hours. Two hours? Yeah, it's normally two hours. If I do my Zoom events where I don't have constraints, like a physical room, right? they're, they're two hours. Two hours. Or four. <laughs> but you, when you do a Zoom... Sometimes you, five. <laughs> you could do a Zoom on your site. Yeah. First of all, before, we're going to name it a few times. What's the name of your site if somebody wants to go to your... JohnEdward.net. JohnEdward.net. Okay. So if someone wants to go to your site or zoom in to you, you could do a reading with them even though they're on Zoom. Oh, God, yeah. I, I do people on the radio all the time. Yeah, I was like a staple on like local morning radio for years. Right. See, now why is it, John, that you could do that on the site, hearing <laughs> without a grant? I have to have a piece of jewelry, or maybe I'm just, I'm just holding on to it like that's my crutch. That's your feather, but you could fly without it. So I'll tell you a really cool story. I have a really good colleague, the way you have a friend. Her name is Shelly Peck. I've known her since I was 15. She right. passed in 2001, and oh, I miss sorry. her every single day. So, yeah. She was my mom's age. It was the funniest moment. I would call her house. Right. I lived in Glen Cove. She lived in Roslyn. I would call her and her kids who are like my age. Right. I'd be like, can I talk to your mom? And we, we talked every single day about her readings. And she said to me, you need to put your cards down. And I said, no, I like reading with them i go i don't tell you how to read like i would like to use my cards yeah so she pushed the envelope for for a while and then finally she gave in and she said you know what i surrender teach me the cards and i went you want me to teach you the cards and she's like yeah teach me the cards i'm like oh my god i would love to teach you the cards so now i'm all excited i got got a deck of cards right and every day we would talk about the cards so then after a few weeks she said to me so i was looking at the cards can you tell me which card is the harry card I said, there is no Harry card. Harry card. And she goes, no? And I said, no, there's no Harry card. She goes, oh. She goes, what's, his, what's the card that told you that I played Rhapsody in Blue for my father? And I went, there is no card that says Rhapsody in Blue. Goes, right, right. She goes, and what's the card? And she did this to me over and over and over again. And I said, Shelly, there is no card that has all that. She was like, you're goddamn right. There's no card. She goes, now put your cards down. You don't need them. So it was her backhanded way of getting me to realize that I didn't need my cards. And I still don't need them. I like them. It's a preference. I like to add salt to my meals. So when you I do, like my cards. Wow. So, yeah, seasoning. Yeah, seasoning. So when you do a private reading yep. with someone, do you do it with cards or you just talk to them? Um, it depends on my mood, actually. Sometimes I get bored. So sometimes I'll, sometimes I have to, sometimes I, I need it as a, in my hand to, to shuffle. Sometimes I, I look at the numerology. It depends. <laughs> But most of the time, I'm just talking to them. I should clarify, if I'm getting information from their loved ones who've passed, right. that has nothing to do with cards. That's coming directly from the people who've passed. When you do someone, do you look them up on Google? No. Or know anything about them? No. Nothing. 
Zero. People, Zero. Keep, people come with fake names. Really? Yeah. You know, what do you think, John, of when I'm walking down the street in Manhattan, psychic tower readings? I mean. Like the neon palm thing? Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I think just like chiro- there's some very good chiropractors, but then there's some bad ones that give the good chiropractors a bad name. So I guess there's some bad uh, psychics who sure. give the psychics a bad name, right? Turn on TikTok. Like legitimately, like there's 5,000 people on TikTok going live calling themselves psychic medium. Every time I'm on TikTok, and I go on TikTok just to escape, like to like watch dogs and fun stuff. um, I usually block out anything that comes up that's psychic related because I don't want to get agitated. I'll get like annoyed because I watch bad, I can't watch bad readings. Like I just can't do it. It just irritates me. You know it's bad. Absolutely. You know they're lying. Absolutely. Or they're misinformed. See, if I was him... You know, because I'm a, I'm a I'm a writer. I would if I were you, I, I, you know, I wear a mask and walk into one of those places and say, yeah, and they don't know your name and say, do me and see what happens. No, I'm just like that. I, just, I would just say, boy, would I love to be there with you when they, you say, no, you're full of shit. You know, this is wrong. I was in the in the UK, and when I was doing a tour of the UK, when I got to the event. Um, I had actually said something to my cousin. My cousin like runs my life. I call her the VP of JE. Right. And she, I said to her, I go, are you, are you telling people not to talk to me? And she goes, what do you mean? I go, well, I'm noticing a trend. Every time I get to the theater, like I'm like, hey, how you doing? What's going on? Yeah. And like people are ignoring me. Like they're like avert, like avoiding right. me. I could see that. Yeah. And I was like, are you saying like whatever? And I, and I literally walk in 90 seconds before I have to walk on stage. Right. Like I leave my hotel. Right. Get to the event. Yeah, I do that. Yeah. Walk in, take the mic. That's it. That's it. And, you know, she's there to open doors like half hour to an hour before an event's it's starting. And if it's a theater, like it's really the theater that runs it. So and then the events would be over. And then they would come up to me and I was doing like an after event for like the stage people, like the audio guy, the, the right, mic. Right, right. And I was like, night after night, I was seeing a pattern, right? So my world is all about energetic patterns and paying attention. And I'm like, okay, so is this astrological that it's happening? Like, why is this happening? So finally, we got to Ireland. And the stage manager at the place in Ireland told us what was happening. There were a couple of other people that were touring, British mediums, UK mediums, I don't know where they were from. And they were not legit. So they expected me to be the not legit American psychic. Wow. Then they watched me walk in from the street 90 seconds before I was introduced on stage and go, whoa. You know, like they were asking questions like, well, when do we do the music? And Katrina was like, we don't have music. Right. Well, wh- what about the lighting cues? Like, how do we know when to do the lighting? And she was like, uh, you're going to light him on stage. That's it. There's, a, there's like, there's no lighting. Well, how do the mic? How do the mic handlers in the audience? How do the ushers know where the people, <laughs> where the people are that he's gonna read? And my cousin was like, "Are your usher psychic?" And they were like, "No." And she's like, "Well, then you're gonna have to wait until he feels who he's going to, and then he'll make them stand, and then you can get mics to them." So that was what their experience was until they met me, and they were like, "That's why they had a lot of questions after the fact because it was like night after night after night. It was the same thing." Right now, when you say that, so. Would you you'll walk? Because I just want to. I I I, I want to understand. It. So you walk into a crowd. There's an audience, mm-hmm. and you just go. I've meditated. I've protected my energy, and I'm open. You're open. Now again, like you said before, do people pick those people, or do you just go? Excuse me, sir. You just get a vibe from this guy for whatever reason. So what'll happen is I will read for people that are in the audience, but sometimes um, I have people that sign up for my newsletter. They sometimes get picked for questions. Well, no, they will get picked for a right, question randomly. Right. And then I'll I'll sometimes answer their question and do a reading for them, but it's not like I read everybody that asks a question. Now, do your children, are they psychic, any of your children? They were raised to understand the world of energy. So, yes. And I had them study astrology because it's something that I did not study. So I don't know astrology. So I had them learn it. And they're continuing to learn it. So... If I have questions, I go to them, like, what does this mean? So astrology, you would say, is very generalized. I mean, mm-hmm. No? Oh, no. If anybody has an, act- an actual astrological reading, not the horoscopes in the paper, like when you have your natal chart done, that, right. is the, that is the blueprint to who you are as Chaz in this lifetime. And it is like your architecture, your soul architecture. It's pretty damn amazing. And you get that read by a... An astrologer. An astrologer. I went to an astrologer once. Okay. A famous one. Okay. Years ago, many years ago. 
And she said to me, my luckiest place to live in were two places. She said, San Francisco and L.A. And I'm like, oh. So that would be called astrocartography, where they would be able to look at your astrological chart and your your whatever the ley lines are. Right. But she might have got that psychically. I'm not sure. She I don't know. That's yeah. what she said. And I never forgot that because I made it. I hit big when I was in L.A. You know, that's when I exploded and then came to New York, whatever. But it always bothered me. I always go, well, I live in New York. Why can't I? Why can't this be my luckiest place, you know? But I, I still do well. I mean, but you can't overcome that, right? Even though that's luckier there than it is I think, here. I think we make our luck. We and make I think, our luck, I right. think that you might resonate with certain places more than others. Right. Like, there are absolute cities that I just will not go back to. Like, just not happening. You won't go back to that. Zero. Z zero chance. Like, publicly would say it on stage. Like, this is my last time, my only time. I'm never coming back here. And my you would, would tell the people that. Outright, directly. Tara's laughing, but yes. Yeah, we have, we have uh, 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 Tara Kanashresi, who uh, is a great comic. She's the one who uh, was able to set this up with John Edwards. Uh, Tara, how, how are you enjoying the reading? Um, uh, uh, first of all, when you asked him how he does it, I, I wanted to say something because sure. I, um, I'm like the true non-believer, like Italian Bronx, like I don't believe right. in anything, kind of probably the same upbringing that John was talking about when he talked about his Irish side of the family. And I went to see John almost about a year ago now, and there's no way, like there's no way to not be a believer when you walk out of the room. Like you can walk in a non-believer, but I walked into a room that maybe had 600 to 700 people in that hotel. I mean, it was hundreds of people, no organized seating. Right. There was no way to know who anybody was, where we were seated. And for him to be, it's like over here. It's not like little, it's not like a generalization. It's like you signed a contract today and you're nervous about it. And yeah. your father says it's going to be okay. And the woman's like, nobody knows that I've signed this contract today. He's like, well, you're nervous about one part and you're, it's, it's like, there's no way. There's wow. no way to just say to somebody, I know no, you signed I, a contract today when the woman is blatantly right. telling you there's no way. Well, it's like he wouldn't, he wouldn't know the, the farm story with, right. the, with the, the gravel it, and the, the falling. I mean, even if you wanted to say, all right, a farm, maybe it's got gravel, a dirt road, but not that you got injured and that a Jay picked you up in a white car. Yeah. I like mean, that's like, yeah, there that's was, specific. That's right? specific. So now take that and add thirty-eight years of actually doing it. Forget and, it. And that's what. And that's it's like, like almost like you say, like, oh, you're at your show or at your act. It those aren't really even the words. Like, there's an event you're holding. Right. No, thank there's you for no that. show. Right. There's no act. Yeah, for me, it's like a classroom. There's like he walks in the room complete. I mean, there's n there is literally no organization to it. You you see, you're seated around other people. Right. You're sitting next to strangers, and he's. Like there's, he knew that a a, a, a you know a, a woman right. um didn't like her her daughter in law and she accused her daughter in law of stealing food but it was really a rat that they had like there's just there's I, I, in the house like there's just no way to even well, go from well, point he, A to point yeah, Z. Yeah, he explained the way it he to does. me yeah. like what happened to me. Multiply that by thirty eight years of like wood wor shedding, wor working, working on this. Yeah, it's working and, at and interpretation. The and, thing that I'm fascinated by. Thank you, Tara. That was great. I mean. You saw it. And I've never seen his show. I've seen him on TV so many times. But I got to go see the show. But what I'm fascinated by is it has to work because you're booked all over the world. People want to see you. And it, it's very easy. If you walk in there and you stink, they're not going to come back no more. <laughs> and as Tara said, I, I like to be in non-theaters. My, my, my favorite thing to do is to be in a hotel ballroom. A and ballroom. A hotel ballroom. And the reason why I like a hotel ballroom is it doesn't give the feeling of a performance. Whereas if I do like an event in certain like countries, I have to do like theaters. I don't love the theater vibe because now people are sitting in an audience uh, and it gives a feeling of like, of a show. like I'm gonna sing, like I'm gonna perform right. in some way. Yeah, I could understand and that. And I'll have to literally say to them like, listen, there's no glass here. I can see you. This is interactive. Treat this like a classroom, because that's really what I feel like everything I do right. is and to I'm teach. Right, and I'm the opposite of you, because when I do my theater piece, I don't want a ballroom. I want a theater. I want a theater. Right. A real theater. That's interesting. 
Yeah, yeah I can understand that totally. I want the opposite. You want it to be where we could talk and we could right. Even when I did Crossing Over, we referred to them as an event that was televised as opposed to a TV show. Do you ever see something and say, oh, I don't want to tell them that? Yes, yeah. I do. You do? <laughs> say, yes. I would rather they find out on their own. Oh, that too. But sometimes there are, are, are moments where there'll be private, personal things that are coming out that I'm just not comfortable having to say to a person. Even if you were doing a one-on-one reading? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, even really? if it's a one-on-one reading. So there's a responsibility being a There should be a responsibility, and there needs to be a level of ethics and responsibility that comes to it. And I'm, I'm also, you know, I'm confident with what I am, and I'm confident with who I am. So, like, I'll tell people, like, I'm not the right person for you. And they'll be like, well, why? I'm like, because I just am not. We're going to last, like, five seconds. And I can tell because, like, they'll come in with an energy that has that cameraman energy for you where it's like, you know, you have to wow me type yeah. of like, And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not for you because that's not who I am. Unless I'm at an event, if I'm doing a, an event and someone gives me a hard time and that person's energy could block me from getting to somebody else, then I'll own that person in the room. Like, it'll be their biggest nightmare. Like, worse than a comedian. My daughter came to an event, and when she left, we got in the car, and she goes, so, here's what I learned about going to work with my dad. And I was like, wow. and she's funny. And I'm like, what? She's like, you're like the Gordon Ramsay of psychics. I was like, I didn't curse. She goes, you didn't have to. Wow. Do you get people that actually stand up at your events and say, I don't believe this? I had somebody say to me last week who got picked for a question, um, and he said, I, I just want to tell you, like, I'm, I'm a non-believer. And I went, okay, I don't really care. Um, you can hand the mic to somebody in your section that has a question. I'd be more than happy to answer their question. And then I like moved to the next person right. and I went to them and it was really funny. I went back to him. I went back to the person who was standing next to him. She goes, I'm Mrs. Non-believer, but I do have a question. And then I answered her question. So, but I think it's, listen, I get it. I respect the skeptical side of stuff because I came from that. So I, I always want people, I think it's important for everybody where we are in 2023 to be critical thinkers. I think we have to become critical thinkers about every field, whether it's healthcare, politicians, psychic stuff, whatever it is, I think we have to not just accept what somebody says, we have to look for backup and validation and something that's evidence-based, right? right? That's what science does. So. I'm the person that in 1999, when I was approached to do an HBO documentary called Life After Life, produced by a journalist, Linda Ellaby, I said yes to that because they had a scientist who was gonna study the subject matter. And I was like, well, how do I not do that? Like if somebody at the University of Arizona wants to do a double blind study and test mediums, how do I not say yes to that? Right, how do you not? I did. So myself and five other people, like I was one of five or six people, that were out there, and I was tested three official times, one unofficial time. That was all written about in a book called The Afterlife Experiments. So for people who wanna look at, are there double blind studies done? Yes, there are. But then there are people who are like, oh, we're just gonna attack the scientist because you know he believes in the Easter bunnies and you know unicorns. And I'm like, how could, you, how could someone be a non-believer when I just told the story about what happened to me, and you, obviously, that, that's a minuscule thing of what you go through. And they go, yes, you're right. I did sign a contract. Oh, my God. How could you, how in God's name could you be I, a non-believer? I can tell you that I've had people come into rooms as believers and leave non-believers after I've read them because I was too accurate. I kid you not. Chaz, I kid you not. But why would you be a non-believer after he's accurate? Because Fear? I don't know. It was too specific, I was told. I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, so I get accused for being like too specific Too now? right? Yeah. Do you, do you ever... So basically, what you're saying to me is, because I want to learn this. What you're saying to me is, when you walk around, you shut everything out. Well, off. Because if you leave, it's like, a, it's like a valve in the back of your head. If you leave that valve open, all kinds of shit runs in. Well, think about it like this. Right now, we're doing an interview. I have my cell phone off because it would be inappropriate for this to be constantly ringing. Right. And if I didn't plug this in and recharge it, I wouldn't be able to use it. We're all basically phones. We have to know when we need to be on, when we need to be off, 
and then we need to know when we have to recharge. Man, I'm going to watch this episode myself a bunch of times. <laughs> I got to tell you, I really do. I mean, I, I'm just fascinated. Uh, Chaz, yeah. I have a question. So uh, after doing this for how many years? 38, you said? Yep. So something like that, you must have seen some crazy things. And if I remember correctly from uh, a few years ago, you had a story about the mafia. Am I, I wrong about that? You're not wrong. I, I need to hear this one because I did not listen to it, but I know that you have this story. So I did a lot of house parties. So a house party was where I would basically be invited to come to someone's house and they would get like 10 people for me to read. And then that was like, like a Tupperware party, just insert the psychic instead right. of the Tupperware. So people would just pass my name around. And then like I would spend a lot of time like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. Well, not Sundays. Sundays I was doing psychic fairs, but like other nights of the week, I would be doing house parties. And I had gotten, gone to a a house that was in Howard Beach. It was off of Cross Bay Boulevard. And I had read probably like 10, 11 people. And I was in somebody's basement. And I was done. I was tired. I read more people than I expected. And I got upstairs and she said, oh my God, you can't leave yet. And I was like, what do you mean I can't leave yet? She goes, you can't leave yet. I was like, no, I'm, I'm good. And she, I thought she was going to offer me like food. Like, you right. know, you got to eat. You know, you, right. you haven't eaten. She's like, I have a VIP coming. I was like, I... Cannot and I would read. I cannot read one more person. Right. And she kind of turned to me and she looked at me and she goes, "You can't say no because I can't say no." She goes, "Please." Oh, okay. And I like looked at her and I was about ready to say no because I'm like, "I'm yeah. out. I'm so sorry." Right. You know, please make whatever. While this is happening, so where I'm standing, the um, like her. I don't know. I came out of her basement. I was on a landing. To my right was the kitchen. I had to go down to get to the front door. Right. So I could look out the big bay window right. out at the street. So I'm looking at big black cars pull up, vans, whatever, and out come people. Yeah. Um, and somebody who was dressed very, very well comes in. I'm escorted back down to the basement. And I was like, okay, so this is happening. So I'm doing the reading. When I tell you I would get more of a reaction from my glasses, like yeah. zero validation. I, I probably was 20 minutes into the reading. By the way, two bodyguards were at the basement right. steps. So basement steps, two guys, me sitting with the guy doing the reading. And then I finally looked down and was like, at my patient level, like was yeah, even right. back then. I'm like, dude, you either have this or you don't have this. Do you have this? And he just sat back and looked at me and he went, you have a very special ability. And I forgot the lady's name, you know, yeah, we don't have to say his name. Whatever her name is. I really remember this. You know, Susie knows how to get in contact with you. And if you ever I needed your services, she'd be able to find you. And I was like, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I just was like, I could not could not wait to change my phone number. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was a very it was a very uh I'm surprised he did that. It was an ego thing with him. Because I know these guys really well. He just said, and I don't know who the he was. I never asked who the he was. I didn't want to know who the yeah, he was. Yeah, well, Howard Beach. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it, there's a big, there's a big family out in Howard Beach. So I had to be one of those guys. And I probably was a boss, and he just wanted to say, I want to go to this guy. Maybe he could tell me something. Whatever. When you speak to someone who's passed away, do you hear their voice, or do you do you see them and hear them, or you just hear their voice? So if you could, right now in your mind count to 10 not out loud but in your mind right you hear how you're hearing that yeah that's how i hear it okay it's like a thought it is a thought but that's not mine it's like somebody puts a thought in my head so i have to pay attention to what i'm actually thinking as opposed to what i'm thinking so there's a thought that i can originate and then there's a thought that i'm actually getting but it's not my not my thought the closest I can give you the analogy is if you've ever read something and while you were reading it, you really weren't comprehending what you were reading because you were thinking that I shut the lights off. You have two, ex two right. coexisting. Well, when I write, when I write a script, okay, it's almost like I'm not writing it. Something else is. It's like a spirit right. is through me. Yep. And I'm right. It's called the flow state, obviously. Okay. And I'm in the flow state, but I see, I see the movie as I'm doing it. Like, I, uh, again, uh, you know, we have not, a lot in common. What? We have a lot in common. Okay. What what I can do is what I can do is I cuz I get paid to rewrite and I get paid to give my opinion on a script. Cuz I could look at a script 
and I'm and I and I wasn't great in college. I wasn't. I, in college, no, I was. De- I was okay in college, much better than high school, because I applied myself in college. I found out many years later I was dyslexic. So what dyslexic took away from me, I was able to like gave me something else where I could turn the page and see the movie. But not only see the movie, I could feel the audience how they're feeling towards the movie. I'm seeing the audience, John, feeling a certain way as I'm turning, and I know how I feel. And I'm saying, okay, this is wrong, that's wrong, this is wrong in this place. And usually I'm right. Sometimes I can't fix it. Sometimes I go, look, I'm not the one to, you need to So you're reading their work differently than just reading. Yes, yes. That's cool. I'm reading it, but I'm seeing it. And it's, and it's fascinating to me. See, now the first time I was, in, I was invited to um, do that for a script in my world, I couldn't get past how little words were on the page. I was like, wait, where's all the words? Wow. Like legitimately, yeah. my daughter and I were, were working on something, taking my first book to turn into a screenplay for something that she can actually do because she's the age that I was and she's an actress. So she's yeah. the age that I was. Oh, your daughter's an actress. Yeah, she's the age. We're not going to talk about her because every time she comes up, she steals all my interviews. <laughs> no, but my kids do I'm the same. I'm kidding, I love her. My kids do the same thing. Daddy, don't talk about my, my I have a daughter who's an No, actress. no, she would love for me to talk about her. Yeah. She no, wanted to be here but, today, but she oh, was in you school. Oh, you should have brought her. No, she was in school. I, I was teasing her. And how I was old like is she? 16. Oh, she's 16. Now, does she go to an art school, a theater school? Uh, right now, she's doing like a home. She's pow- powering through like school because she wants to be done because she doesn't want to, if she's on set again, have to be limited to child hours. Wow. Oh, yeah, she's yes. right. Yes, she also announced to us that she wanted to emancipate herself so that she can work adult hours because she was tired of being cut out of scenes. That's true. That's true. I know about that. Once my daughter became, my daughter's an actress, so is my son. Both of them are. And both, God bless, are doing okay. And um, my daughter's 21. And she's graduating University of Michigan. And my son graduated Berkeley. And they're both, what? Okay, Tara's looking at me. Oh, and they're both, you know, they're, dad, don't talk about me. Don't, they just, kids are just different. And, and to you, and to her, you're dad. You're dad. Yeah. You're this renowned person all over the world, but you're dad. My kids are the same way. Dad, what do you know? What do I know? I only, you know, I've been in the business 40 years. Wait, do they correct you? Oh, yeah. Is that the best? Dad, it's not the way it is now. Yeah, I know. That's the one I hear mostly. Yes. We went live on TikTok for the. Fr- I went live on TikTok yeah. for the first time, and as the as the the names of the people were coming up, I had to pick somebody to go live with, right? Yeah. So a lot of the people that were on there were like, I don't know, like Satan Baby Twenty Two. Like they were like just weird, weird. Right, 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 so right. I'm like, no, not her. No, she's not a good one. No, not her. And all of a sudden, my daughter pushes me out of the camera, and she's like, "What my dad means is he's not energetically." pull to you and that's why he's not picking you well, so when we got done i was like what the hell was that she's like are you trying to get yourself canceled and i was like what she what? goes she doesn't look good she does she's not a good one my, she doesn't yeah. look good i was my, like yes i mean energy wise she was like well that's not what she said <laughs> i remember my son uh quickly it was when they, you know people come over the house but now they have like uh, what do you call them? Play dates where they come over to the house. My son was growing up. I didn't have play dates. We just hung out on the street corner. Are there play dates now, or is it just that you pop a headset on and they're on a screen? Yes. You, right? you know what? You're probably right. But we had kids coming over the house at seven, eight years old my, from my son's school, and I would open the door and the parents would be there, and they would stare at me going, I'm sorry, you're, you're child's mom there. And I said, Yes. They said, Am I in the right house? I said, Yes. Is you, I have a son, uh, you have a son Dante? I go, yes, that's my son. They go, oh. And they would bring their kids there to play, you know? And I remember the kids, p- the parents saying to me, you have a great son, you know, he's, he's eight years old. He never mentioned that you were his father. I said, well, well, why should he? I mean. My son thought I was a baseball player. <laughs> I was like, I can't throw a freaking ball. What do you mean I'm a baseball player? As well, a kid, he thought I was like, I guess on a, on a team because I, well, I used to wear a New York uh, bank, uh, Yankees right, cap. Right. So he thought I was a baseball player. Wow. I, I got to say, John, it, it's really, it's it's been a, uh, this is a highlight for me. It really oh, is. Thank, me and too. I, well, thank you. I really mean this sincerely. Uh, I, it's like, and how could someone, uh, you know, go to your web, johnedwards.net? So there's two things. There's johnedwards.net, which is kind of like my official website. And okay. then I'm on an app called evolveplus.tv where I have my own channel. And I actually go live on there and read for people on there. Evolve. Evolve Plus. Plus. 
dot, dot TV. Dot TV. And there's like a, a cookie logo that if you download the app, they'll see a, a cookie like with a Saturn ring. So they could go live with you. Yeah, I go live on there. Wow. So you, you got to, I mean, you know, this guy, and I mean this sincerely, you know, he's like, when it comes to psychic mediums, he's the Babe Ruth. You well, know, thank you. No, no, it's I true. I appreciate that. You, and I and I say that, you know, you have been around so long. You're so, um, what's the word? Legitimized, if I could say that word. I'll, t- I'll accept the word. Okay. I appreciate he that. He is the Babe Ruth. There's John Edwards, and then there's, seriously, and then there's everybody else. So to have you on the show, um, it really means a lot to me. I, I appreciate I don't, that. Yeah. I, is there anything else you want to add before we... we uh, you know, and this is, is there any uh, people come and see you live, right? Yeah, they can come see me live. So, the, how do they find out where you're appearing? It's on both the Evolve Plus app and then it's also on my website, John on Edward, your website, John Edward.net. Do you ever get people like, uh, uh, you know, I'll say I'm psychic, you know, and if I'm, you're stuck in traffic, they'll go, hey, dad, why didn't you see this coming? Or stupid things like that. Um, <laughs> I mean, over the years, there's over been, the years. there's been moments like you know we had a car stolen from my driveway, right? And my my wife was like, "How come nobody wanted to give you a heads up about that?" <laughs> like you know, like fun moments like that. Fun moments. That's what I mean. Well, I got to tell you, John, it's, it's really been a highlight to, to Same. talk to you. I appreciate it's this. Been a pleasure. And thank you, Tara, for introducing us. Yes, Tara. And if you want to go see Tara, a great comic, go to Tara Jokes. They got it. Tara Jokes on Instagram. You got to go see her. Uh, this is Chaz Palmentary. You never know who's going to show up here. It's uh, every Monday at 11 o'clock. God bless you. If you want to come and see my one-man show, go to Chaz my, uh, um, my Or go to my Instagram. Or don't forget my restaurants, Chaz Palmentary, uh, one on 30 West 46th Street and 264 Main Street. Top Italian food. I don't say it's the best, but I say it's in the top five in the country. All right? God bless. See you next week.